How pack sheds on fruit and vegetable farms are designed has an enormous impact on a farm's profitability and the ease of day-to-day -day operations. A well-designed and brightly lit area that is large enough to move around in improves worker comfort and safety and increases efficiency when moving product. Because of the overlap between human pathogens and plant pathogens, a space that is well ventilated and easy to clean will both improve produce safety and extend product shelf life. This video shows how a diversified farm went from renovating an old dairy barn to building a new pack shed as their business grew. My name is Mark Fosching. My wife, Krista Alexander, and I run Jericho Settlers Farm. Started out really small, quarter acre garden, sold uh, produce out in front of the house on a table by the side of the road, and um, that was our market. And we we're probably farming about close to 25 acres of tillable ground that we actually put in crops every year. And we graze probably 100 acres of uh, sheep, beef, pork, and chicken. We basically have an old, um, an old dairy barn, Gambrel Dairy Barn, um, which was probably, I think it was built in the 30s, 1930s. So basically, uh, no insulation barn, like an old cow barn. Um, various sections of concrete that would all bust it up and dirt floor. Very cold in the wintertime because there was, like I said, there's no insulation. You could see right through the barn boards to the outside. We uh, insulated it, added plywood or dairy board that was washable. Uh, painted the ceilings, added lights, brightened the place up so we could see what we're doing. Um, initially we had some uh, gravel in there just so we could walk around, we weren't on dirt. And um, then we uh, poured concrete and had uh, drainage, uh, drainage to drain the water in that, in that facility. The most important thing um, was doing the concrete floor and the drainage because the concrete allowed us then to move items around with a hand truck and you know, move it pretty easily. Anyone could move you know, quite a bit of weight on a hand truck or a cart as opposed to doing it by themselves. So it basically reduced uh, multiple trips. So in matters of, of efficiency and ease on your body, concrete was, was a big factor uh, for us. We got an old egg washer, and so we put that on, on one section of the barn. There's like a wall in that, in that barn, that kind of a wall and, and a door that segregate that, what we call the egg room, from the, well, it used to be the vegetable room, uh, which is on the other side of the wall. So anyone who was coming in after collecting eggs, um, they would wash their boots off in the egg room and spray that down. And then we'd limit foot traffic through there if their people are going into the, to the uh, vegetable slash wash pack area. The initial changes from the old barn, we made those changes just for, for ease of use for us and our employees. Um, and then as, as the food safety um, became more uh, prevalent in our thoughts, it's like, okay, what can we do next? In 2011, we started building that new add-on to the barn, which is roughly 20 wide by 43 long. And like I said, half of that was cooler and half of that was loading dock space. So when we added the addition, we started picking up more stainless steel sinks and tables and um, we added uh, the washable dairy board in there, more lighting, um, just more of a safe environment for, um, for working and for food safety. And at the time we thought it was big enough, but once we started adding in a barrel washer, we lost some of that space. Once we started adding in a sink or a Rubbermaid tank to wash greens, we lost some more space. That now add to that, bringing in your totes or crates of produce, to get them off of the truck, then you've you know then you've got it full, and then add to that, okay, we got to have people working in there. It got small really quick, and yeah. then at that point, it's like, okay, we need to add again just for our sanity and workflow. So if we had something a little bit bigger and we're more efficient, these days will get shorter, the crew morale will improve. At the end of the season, they're not beat up. I looked at other barns, looked at a lot of stuff online, uh, talked to people. Um, about what we might want to do. And uh, I was always advocating for a little bit bigger, for something that would work with us in the future. And 
so part of that was, you know, something width, you length, into. something we grow into. Bought a pretty sizable used walk-in cooler panels, and um, that in part kind of dictated the size of the building that we wanted to build. There's two bigger coolers in there now. Uh, one's a 22 by 22 by, I think it's 11 feet high at the ceiling, so a little bit taller than our previous cooler. Uh, so we can stack things, and the next one over, we went right to the to the ceiling rafters, which is around 18 feet. So now we can really stack uh, height-wise. We can get we can stack bins that are coming out of the field and use that space. So we got a big field cooler, which is roughly 23 by 22 by 18 high. Basically, that barn is 45 by 85, 18 feet high ceiling. And about half of that space is an open area where we have our wash pack um, equipment. So barrel washers, brush washers, soap tanks, stainless steel tables, and a lot of those things we're, we have on wheels or we're transitioning to put them on wheels, our barrel washer. Uh, we just got, we haven't got it on wheels yet, but it's gonna go on wheels. Uh, soap tank we got on wheels, pallet jacks, you know, even our garbage can is on wheels so we can move them around and basically reconfigure our space as we, uh, as we need to. And um, so half of that is open and the other half is, is really cooler space. And we have two garage doors on either end of that so we can open that, bring the forklift in, stack our, to our, our bins, our field bins, and then when we're uh, taking those crops out, primarily root crops, potatoes, carrots, beets, parsnips, cabbage, those crops we can bring out to process and wash um, we can do that throughout the winter time. If you look at workflow, um, you're gathering all your products out in the field, putting them in your truck, uh, bringing them up to your wash facility, unloading facility, is, you know, how easy is it getting in and out of that facility? You know, do you have a big garage door you can push all that product through? Is it a small little person door that you can push that product through? Farming is about handling materials. Yeah. Your material is, you know, a root crop or lettuce or, you know, and if there's ways that you can reduce the number of times you have to handle something, you become more profitable. Now it gets harvested into a bin, gets picked up on our trailer, and gets tractored up to the barn. Then from the barn, it, it gets forklift and stacked into our new, into the field cooler, what we call the field cooler, which is the big cooler. Now I'm moving things with tractor forks and a forklift so we've reduced like four to five different handling steps, which has multiple benefits because you're, if you're more efficient, you're more profitable, and your your feet you're not dead tired at the end of the day. Your crew's a little happier. Build as big as you can afford. Go with height if you want to stack product higher. You know it's it's more affordable to uh, stack product high in a taller building than it is to build something wider and longer. Just, you know, think if you're thinking of concrete, you can, you know, you can, you can stack 20, you know, 20 feet high or more um, on a small foot, footprint uh, versus if you had to m make that uh, concrete footprint bigger, if you're not gonna stack as high. So it's more, it's more cost effective to, to have a higher, taller uh, facility in my, in my opinion. Partly why we wanted height in this new barn was to be able to drop either you know from the ceiling uh, drop power so you're not walking over electrical cords and also have a plumbing system where you can drop water to your wash tanks so again you're not you know dragging a uh, garden hose you know across a dirty concrete floor and filling up the tank you want it all just dropping right in concrete is a must couple that with drainage because you're going to have lots of water if you're doing if you're washing vegetables there's going to be a lot of water flowing through that facility and size the drainage such that you can move that water out of there and then also be able to uh, you know, retrieve the sediment out of that drain because uh, there's going to be a lot of dirt flowing into those uh, drainage channels to you know, kind of like a sediment box that you can actually get into and, and remove the sediment. Probably the first thing to think about if you're going to expand, I mean, this is not the answer you want to hear, but why are you expanding? Is it because there's a market out there that hasn't been tapped and you want to go after it? Um, or are you just expanding because you're working in too tight of a spot? You have to really figure out why you want to expand because that'll probably drive how big you expand into and how fast you expand into something. 
Um, but once you make that decision, um, I guess my first advice would be build bigger than you think you're going to need within reason. I mean, obviously you can't build something so huge you run out of money that you, all you have is a shell and you got nothing to put in it. I mean, we found every time we've expanded a little bit, it's like within a year or two we've outgrown it. So it's like, let's build something that we can grow into within five to ten years. And, you know, how big and, and you know, the size, the height, the width, the footprint, what that looks like is kind of a little bit nebulous at first. Um, but visiting other farms that have gone through that process is very helpful. Visiting other uh, people's evolution of how they've evolved from their old dairy barn to a new facility, you know, what size they've used, what, you know, what machinery they use, um, how they move product around. Going to those farms and actually seeing that process as, the, as it's evolved for them is very helpful. Get you thinking about what might work for you on your farm.